The president then continues, writing the administration is, quote, waiting to hear from the kingdom as to who they believe was the cause of this attack and under what terms we should proceed, we would proceed. That is bizarre. What? That he... he <laughs> He's he, waiting for word from. He, he's waiting. He needs word from someone from MBS <laughs> to determine whether Americans are going to go fight and possibly die in another Middle That's East war. That's pretty much everything you need to know. President Trump has previously used the locked and loaded threat against North Korea and used nearly identical language aimed at Iran earlier this so summer. So, Richard Haas, when, when wow. the news broke uh, overnight, Friday night, early Saturday morning, uh, I, I think I got a breaking news alert from the BBC, and my first reaction was, in the middle of the night looking at this, Oh, wait, the Red Sox lost, and yeah, this wow. happened. As I was checking my notifications, um, my, my, my question was, does Yemen really have the capability to strike the, the Saudis' two most important oil facilities uh, from that distance? I, 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 first of all, I find that hard to believe. At the same time, Richard, give us your insights would Iran really be so brazen? Would Iran really be so reckless? A country that has survived since 1979 to actually launch attacks on these refineries, uh, knowing that they could expect the same in return if they did. And Joe, the, the fog of war is particularly thick this morning. Uh, yeah. This, uh, you know, the Houthis have certain capabilities largely supplied by uh, Iran. And one way to think of this is this could be revenge against Saudi Arabia because of its policy in, in Yemen. It's, it's high-level bombing that's caused all sorts of civilian uh, casualties, years of civil war there. So that's one potential context. The other is the United States has been carrying out economic warfare against Iran, and this could be Iran retaliating. And Iran wouldn't do it directly, most likely, but traditionally when Iran wants to act, they do it behind someone, usually some militia. Uh, they hide their, their hand. And so right now I've seen reports that this could be drones, cruise missiles or ballistic missiles. I've seen the idea that it could have come out of Yemen, out of uh, Iraq, a militia there, or out of Iran itself. So the answer is it's really unclear, and the administration hasn't helped because their comments, as you suggest, have been, have been all over the place. They talk about we know the culprit, the Secretary of State blames uh, Iran. Uh, my own sense is Iran likely had a role, but exactly what is unclear. They seem to be quite forward on, on their skis. The comment you referred to, this deference to Saudi Arabia, is, is bizarre, uh, to, to, to say the least. And then our options, uh, once we learn about it, aren't great. If it's Yemen-driven, well, what are we going to mm -hmm. do there? Uh, we don't want to get involved any more than we are in the Civil War. Arguably, we want to dial it down. If Iran's involved, we're already carrying out uh, economic warfare. So what's left? And if we retaliate militarily, nobody thinks it would stop but, there. But, Richard, though, but I mean, how reckless that you have the secretary of state and the president both already blaming Iran and the president saying we're locked and loaded. And if we get confirmation from Saudi Arabia, then we're going to they seem to suggest seem to suggest they're going to then strike Iran. Uh, this, I, I just wonder if this like you said, there's the fog of war. And I wonder if you look through the fog, it doesn't look like. Uh, the Bay of Tonkin, if something actually happens from this, it looks like they're looking for an excuse to go to war with Iran. Uh, some may be, but on the other hand, the entire Trump presidency has been premised on the idea of winding down wars. He uses the phrase fire and fury, locked and loaded, but the last I checked, Joe, other than shooting a couple of cruise missiles in Syria, we essentially have eschewed military uh, action. And again, uh, even if we were to use military force against Iran, I don't know anybody in the business who thinks that's the beginning and end of it. Again, you have Iranian militias you have, you know, who could do all sorts of things. Iran itself could do things. Uh, this has already taken for I don't know how long, what, 6% of the world's oil off the market. Uh, one can imagine this growing. Saudi Arabia is, is congenitally uh, vulnerable. So I also, you not only have the fog of war, to be perfectly blunt, you have the fog of American foreign policy.
It is just, uh, it's hard to understand. Trump also tweeted yesterday, quote, the fake news is saying that I'm willing to meet with Iran, no conditions. That is an incorrect statement, really? as usual. So... Wait, I, I, Mika, I thought I could sworn the president said that he would do that himself. I, I wish we had some videotape that would clarify this misunderstanding, this so-called mm. fake news. Cue the montage. I would certainly meet with Iran if they wanted to meet. Do you have preconditions for that meeting? No preconditions, no. They want to meet, I'll meet. Anytime they want. Anytime they want. It's good for the country, good for them, good for us, and good for the world. No preconditions. If they want to meet, I'll meet. Is All it one-on-one -on -one talks to you in the Ayatollah or you in the president? Me. You know, here's what I want. Anything that gets you to the result, you want to talk good, otherwise you can have a bad economy no for the next three years. Not as far as I'm concerned. No preconditions. I think, you know, we've done more sanctions on Iran than anybody, uh, and it's absolutely working. Now, the president has made clear he, he's happy to take a meeting with no preconditions. Secretary Pompeo, for clarity on this, can you foresee a meeting between President Trump and the Iranian leader later this month surrounding the United Nations? Sure. Would the president support that, and do you support that act? The president's made very clear he's prepared to meet with no preconditions. Okay, so we heard it about seven times from the president and from the president's secretary of state. Yeah. And from the president's treasury secretary. Mm-hmm. Check. That they would meet Iran and their leaders with no preconditions. Let's put that tweet back up again. Let's see here. <clears throat> what is the president says the fake, fake the fake news is saying that I'm willing to meet with Iran, no conditions. That is an incorrect statement. Okay, so this is, I don't know. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people that are fragile um, and they don't like when the president's called a liar. So mm -hmm. I will let you conclude yourself whether you think the president is a liar or not and whether he uses fake news to cover up his lies. As he's done repeatedly, the president just said that it was a lie right. to suggest that he was going to meet with preconditions. I want to run that montage one more time because it's Monday morning. I'm a little, a little foggy headed. Actually, the Red Sox swept this weekend. Mm -hmm. And so I really am. I, I, I've got a vertigo, a bit of vertigo. So maybe I just maybe I didn't understand this. As Denzel Washington said in Philadelphia, maybe you need to explain it to me like I'm a fourth grader. So explain it to me like I'm a fourth grader. The president says it's fake. Okay, stay with me. Yeah. Stay, are you still with me, y'all? We're with you. Are you with me, y'all? We're all with you. I'm talking to our friends out there. Hey, y'all, are you still with me? Are you still watching? What's the accent? Okay. It's my accent. Let's just, let's just get to the point. See, y'all, are you still with me? Because I'm going to show y'all what the president said in the tweet. This is, was on the Twitter. Watch this, okay? The president says, could y'all put the Twitter up again? We'll put it up again. This is what the president said. He would tag fake news. The fake news is saying that I am willing to meet with Iran, no conditions. This is an incorrect statement as Never usual. Said that. Wow, he really got the fake news, didn't he? Well, let's see if the president and his friends ever said he was going to meet with Iran with no preconditions. Roll the tape. I would certainly meet with Iran if they wanted to meet. Do you have preconditions for that meeting? No preconditions, no. They want to meet, I'll meet. Anytime they want. Anytime they want. It's good for the country, good for them, good for us, and good for the world. No preconditions. If they want to meet, I'll meet. Is All it one-on-one -on -one talks to you in the Ayatollah or are you in the president? It doesn't matter to me. You know, here's what I want. Anything that gets you to the result, you want to talk good, otherwise you can have a bad economy no for the next three years. Not as far as I'm concerned. No preconditions. I think, you know, we've done more sanctions on Iran than anybody, uh, and it's absolutely working. Now, the president has made clear he, he's happy to take a meeting with no preconditions. Secretary Pompeo, for clarity on this, can you foresee a meeting between President Trump and the Iranian leader later this month surrounding the United Nations? Sure. Would the president support that, and do you support that act? The president's made very clear he's prepared to meet with no preconditions. So there it is, Mika. I'm confused because, okay. again, the president says no preconditions. Shannon, the president says no preconditions. <laughs> He's been saying no preconditions. Mike Pompeo says no preconditions. 
Uh, you have the Treasury Secretary saying no preconditions. The, the president sounds fairly desperate to meet with the Iranians. What happened this weekend? Why is he now lying and saying?